Did you know about the time Nirvana had such a tough time on stage that they gave their worst show ever and people wanted their money back? In this video, we're going to explore what happened to Nirvana during their 1993 Brazil show, both on stage and off stage, including the moment Kurt threatened to jump out of a hotel window. Plus, we'll see how Flea from Red Hot Chili Peppers came to the rescue. But before we start, if you're new here, hit subscribe and push the like button to help us beat the algorithm. So let's dive right in without further ado and get started. Let's quickly go back to the early 90s when grunge music was a big revolution. Nirvana, a band at the center of this movement, became very famous starting from the Seattle music scene. Their lead singer, Kurt Cobain, was famous for being rebellious which made their music and shows really unique. The song that threw them right into fame was Smells Like Teen Spirit. But Kurt had a complex relationship with this track. To him, it was an attempt to mimic the dynamics of bands like the Pixies, blending quiet verses with loud, hard hitting choruses. But despite its success, Kurt felt it overshadowed his other work. He got sick of it because of its overexposure and constant play on MTV. Nirvana began to hate their biggest hit because it created a conflict between their artistic values and mainstream success. And it started to show in their live performances. Like this one time on a TV show called Top of the Pops, where they asked him to lip sync the song. He was so discontented that he started singing in a really deep voice, which is not his usual style. It was his way of protesting against pretending to play the song. Then at a 1992 concert in Buenos Aires, Argentina, he teased the audience by starting Teen Spirit. The crowd got excited, hoping to finally hear their favorite song live. But then Kurt switched to another less famous track. He was showing his growing weariness of the track while making a point that he was tired of playing the same hit repeatedly. At this point, their live performances became reflections of this internal struggle. They're juggling being super popular with trying to stay true to their music. And all this sets up for a pretty wild moment when Flea steps into the rescue. Bo's shows were nothing compared to the show we've got in store for you next. Two weeks before Christmas in 1992, Nirvana released Incesticide, a collection of outtakes and b-sides. It made an impressive debut on the Billboard charts at number 51. This was remarkable, especially since it wasn't new material. Within just two months, it sold half a million copies, and that was without any major promotional efforts or touring. The only dates Nirvana played that January were two mega stadium shows in Brazil undertaken for huge paydays. They were part of the Hollywood Rock Festival a massive event that featured a lineup of international stars, including Alice in Chains, Red Hot Chili Peppers, and Simply Red. The first concert took place on January 16th in Sao Paulo. It attracted the largest audience Nirvana ever played for with a crowd of 110,000 spectators. However, according to Heavier Than Heaven by Charles Cross, both the crew and the band remember this concert as their worst performance ever, the band hadn't practiced together for a while and Kurt was feeling really anxious. On top of that, he had taken some pills and drank alcohol, which made it hard for him to even play a single note properly. It was very erratic to say the least. Things got so out of control. Kurt's guitar playing was so bad. He spent more time yelling and screaming than singing. He moved around the stage appearing troubled and confused. At one moment, he even touched and spat on a camera that was broadcasting the concert live on a local TV channel. <laughs> Guitar technician Ernie Bailey described it as a comedy of errors. Just 30 minutes in, the audience grew frustrated, resorting to booing and hurling fruit at the band. 
However, the team soon found him and pushed him back on stage. They had to play for 45 minutes to meet their contract terms. Otherwise, they wouldn't get paid. But even the huge check didn't cover the costs of the equipment the band destroyed later. It was a show from hell. Chris described it as a mental breakdown. Ironically, there was a hint of truth to this. With a week to go before their next show, Nirvana had intended to work meanwhile on their upcoming album. But when they checked into their high-rise hotel in Rio, Kurt had an argument with Courtney and became very depressed. Their production manager, Jeff Mason, was so concerned Kurt might jump out a window that he decided to move him to a different hotel, specifically looking for a room without a balcony. While the rest of the band enjoyed the comforts of a luxury skyscraper, Kurt stayed in a single-story flea bag. There are several explanations for this outburst. On top of the argument he had with Courtney, Kurt was dealing with withdrawal. He was also upset that the festival was a capitalist machine promoting a cigarette brand called Hollywood. On tour, he was under constant observation by both the band and crew, making it impossible for him to slip away. To manage his cravings, he turned to any intoxicants he could. This was a far less reliable formula, which resulted in this awful show of January 16, 1993. Fortunately, a week later, on January 23, 1993, Nirvana had another opportunity to redeem themselves. They took to the stage again at the Hollywood Rock Festival in Brazil, where they showcased a more polished and cohesive set. The highlight of this wild and unpredictable show was when Flea joined them on stage. But unfortunately, this collaboration was overlooked as headlines. The exclusive footage and reviews focused more on Nirvana's poor performance on the previous show. Flea, the bassist from Red Hot Chili Peppers, had a special connection with Nirvana. Even though their music styles were different, they respected and admired each other's work. Flea, known for his lively personality and unique bass playing, was inspired by Kurt's songwriting and his focus on the real meaning of music, avoiding anything shallow. This collaboration left the audience both shocked and excited. Instead of playing the bass, Flea chose a different instrument. For the encore, Dave Grohl and Chris Novoselic came back on stage first without Kurt. They began with a jam of Aerosmith's Sweet Emotion. Then Kurt returned for the final part of the concert. Both Kurt and Grohl were dressed in lingerie, showing the band's love for surprising their audience. Now we're curious to know what makes a good show for you. Are you hoping for a show that sounds just like the recordings? Or do you want to experience something different and special? Let us know in the comments below. <laughs>